It can be really overwhelming when you have a lot of food sensitivities and food allergies. It can feel like you can't go to anyone's house, you can't go out to eat, and honestly, you don't even know what to cook for yourself. But that's where I'm here to help. So I have a lot of food allergies and food sensitivities, and I really specialize at helping others, um, whether it's the same food allergies or different ones, helping them find a way to eat with the food allergies and restrictions that they have so that they can still enjoy food and feel like life is good and they're not being deprived because that is one of the most important things. So one of the first questions I ask people is, what are some of your favorite foods? What are the things that you are like, that you the thought of not having is really challenging. And then I try to see if there's a way we can adapt the recipe or create a recipe to mi to get to mimic those flavors so that they feel like they are still able to have something like that or similar to it. Um and you know, it it is I'm not going to say it's easy to live a life without with food restrictions and food sensitivities. It's not, you know, people will tell me, man, there is no way I could live without gluten. Actually, honestly, I feel like they've made so many advances in the gluten-free world that I don't really mind being gluten-free. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love a croissant. That's one of the things that I'm like, gosh, if I could have a croissant. And when you're first gluten-free, it, you know, it, it might be nice. Um, you may need to tell the people that you go out to eat with, you know, that in your support system, the close knit people to be like, hey, could we skip the bread at dinner tonight? Because that's just hard for me to have at the restaurant. But honestly, for me now, I don't care if the bread's at the table. I can handle sitting there and seeing it. But it's taken many years to get to that point. And I can go to a party, see all the things I can't have. But one of the things that I recommend to make life more manageable is so when you're going to dinner at someone's house or to a potluck, think about what is the most important part or parts of the meal. And it might mean that you need to bring those parts. So, um... Let's say you know you're gonna really want a dessert at the potluck and you know they're providing a main course that you'll be able to have and there's gonna be a salad or some fruit, maybe some chips or whatever. So you're like, you know what? There's gonna be food I can eat, but there is not gonna be a dessert. They're gonna have all these great things that I want to have. So I'm gonna make some gluten-free cookies that I can bring to it, or I'm going to make a fruit salad so that there's something that feels sweet and it makes me happy. Literally, these are really important things. Another thing that I really do, and it's not necessarily healthy per se, I'm all about balance. You know, you live your life once and if you are too busy depriving yourself, then you are more likely to go completely off the bandwagon. And so I encourage you, you know, it's an okay to have an occasional treat. Um, so with that being said, so what I will do, I know where all my, I know where to get good treats in my area. And when I go on vacation, I've already scouted out where is a good gluten-free bakery, um, where are restaurants that have good gluten-free, dairy-free food options for me, where are some health food stores. I, I have these scouted out so that when I go on vacation, I can have a plan in action in order to achieve these things. Um, I also sometimes like, especially when you're newly diagnosed with food allergies, I'm using gluten a lot just because that's a common one. 
I'm gluten free, dairy free, and I have some others, but I'm just, but I'm primarily addressing it with gluten. But it can be applied to all, and trust me, I have done worked with people who have had really intense restrictive diets, and we've had it like work from that and then build up and until they were able to have more foods. So I do work with that, but and I'm very very creative. Um, and that's also something that you have to be willing to do is learn to be a creative and adapt. Um, and if that's something that's not your skill set, that's when something like working with me is really a good idea. But so I, when I started dating people, I was, I realized I needed a list of restaurants I could eat at because it was a big problem for people. Like when I'm people would be like, Oh, well, let's go get something to eat. And then they're like, Oh, you have all these food allergies. I don't even know where to take you. There's, you can't even eat anywhere, but the answer is you can eat places. So I literally made a spreadsheet out with restaurants, um, in my area and different areas around the, the metro area, some restaurants that I, I Googled until I found all the different places. I did that even for my local area. And I would, when I would go places, I would take a notation of what I ordered, what I thought of it. And if there were other things on the menu that I was interested in, highly recommend that. Not just if you're dating, it's just handy because like a friend asks you to go to lunch and you're like, and then they're like, you know, I don't really know where you can eat. So you're like, oh, well, you know, what about this place or this place? It makes you a lot more fun to be around because people don't want to, um, they feel bad that you can't have things and you don't want them to feel bad and you don't want to be difficult. It's this whole little vicious cycle. So let's not be difficult. Let's just be assertive and say some of the places that are, are a good option for you. I'm a people pleaser. And so by nature, I naturally find myself being like, well, you know, it doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't matter. I, I'll just get a stomach ache. It's fine. Just as long as it's gluten free. Well, that's really a stupid way to be. Because if I'm assertive and I say, you know what, these are the restaurants that I can eat at that meet my criteria of the way I eat and live, then I am not going off track. I am eating according to my guidelines and I am maintaining my lifestyle. And I am not getting sick. Who wants to be sick? I do not enjoy being sick. It's generally anything that you're allergic to or sensitive to, if you eat it just because it's convenient, it's usually in the end not worth it. So, but even at home, I sometimes get overwhelmed and have trouble figuring out what is some good options. So I kind of have a little go-to um, template of throw together a, a quick, easy meal with whatever I have in the fridge and cupboards. And I try to keep some basic staples on hand for snacks. And I always try to bring some snacks with me. Bring some snacks that meet your requirements and keep them in your car, keep them in your purse, keep it at your office, keep them where you're gonna need them. Because you never know when you're gonna need it. And honestly, I've gone to a party and knowing there was, that there wasn't gonna be any food to eat, that I was gonna be able to eat. So I've been in the car right beforehand, just eating a snack, knowing I'm going to a dinner, but knowing I won't be able to eat it. And so, you know, I just intentionally go not hungry. So, but when I'm throwing together a meal at home, what I will do is one, make sure there's a protein. Make sure there's a protein that you like, whether it be a vegetarian or non-vegetarian -veg if you eat meat. 
um, include a starch. You don't have to include a starch. I often eat many of my meals without starches, but you know, it's not about, starches do provide some nutritional benefit. So including them in some of your meals is important. So, you know, for instance, you can include like a sweet potato, potato, rice, quinoa, pasta, or winter squash. Those are all great start, um, starches that are, most people are, aren't allergic. Um, include some low carb veggies. I love, I try to include, have a salad once a day, but, at, but then some other veggies are like lettuce, cabbage, zucchini, asparagus, spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, bok choy, celery, mushrooms, kale, peppers, cucumbers, green peppers, eggplant, and tomatoes. You may not like all those. Try to eat as many of the different varieties as you can. Awesome. Include a healthy fat. So I, I recommend avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil, or nuts and seeds. Um, season with herbs and spices. I found the more I started to eat healthy and on a more restrictive diet, the more herbs became a big part of my life. And I love to cook with fresh herbs, but I also, if I don't have fresh herbs on hand, I am all about my spice cupboard. Um, that, it's so easy just to like mix and match. I have this thing I don't know if you guys are big chopped um, people I love watching the TV show chopped um, and so what I do is I kind of prepare meals like I'm cooking in a chopped kitchen well let's see I'm gonna cook a uh, lunch or dinner and I'm going to see it what kind of how creative and pretty and wonderful dish that I can cook with ingredients found in my my pantry and my fridge and I played it nicely because you know half of the the battle is eating with your eyes you do start enjoying your meal with your eyes and if you are finding that you just are not liking the foods like one thing that I don't eat very much of anymore, and that is probably one of the most common foods for the majority of the US population is pizza. I don't eat very much pizza. Honestly, I don't think gluten-free pizza is very good. There are some gluten-free pizzas that are decent, but in general, I don't particularly love it. I'm not a huge fan of dairy-free cheese. There are some dairy-free cheese that's reasonable, but I'm gluten-free and I'm dairy-free. And I can make a pizza that is fantastic without gluten and without dairy. And I enjoy it. Um, but in general, it's it like, I, for me, it's not something I crave. And I've learned I would rather just eat other things. But that's just me. Pizza's not my go-to. Um, but I can certainly help you if that's your go-to and you're like, I can't live a life without pizza, then by all means, let me help you. Um, there are, I mean, honestly, I, for my birthday, I went, I went bowling and for pizza and I literally Googled best gluten-free pizza in the Denver metro area. And I went to a new place I'd never been. And that, and I read all the reviews, you know, and then there's apps like Find Me Gluten Free and, and different things. So there's lots of resources out there now. When my niece first found out she had celiac disease and we, we had to start learning about gluten free food, um, it was, it was hard because half of the products weren't great. And it was, so you spend a lot of money on a lot of products that weren't good. So that's why I also recommend um, 
putting it out there, like if you are just newly diagnosed with celiac or food allergies, put it out there and say, hey, I have any, I can't eat gluten anymore or dairy anymore. Does anyone know of any good options for me? Because you, you might be surprised. You find out you have lots of friends who have similar food allergies and that way, it, just in and of itself, you're, you're creating a little support system for yourself, but you're also getting advice. They've been down this road a little longer. They might already know some of it. The other fact is um, just really learn to practice self-care. And it's, I lost my brain of thought for a second there. Um, you know, just learning to be kind to yourself in this journey. It's hard and use the resources out there. There is, are so many people out there who can help you. I am one of them, but there are others. And, you know, seek out resources, Google things. And if there's something you don't know how, like, you're like, I am missing this, Google a recipe for it. I do encourage you, you to learn to bake a little bit more. Um, but if that, that's not you, um, you know, maybe you have a friend who's, who's, who can help you or, you know, or maybe there is a place where you can get it. Like I know when my daughter was in the hospital in Spokane years ago, um, there was this, gluten-free gluten bakery that was about a 10 mile minute drive from the hospital. And so she didn't like the hospital food. And so I would drive down, you know, at least once a day and go and get her some gluten-free food. We discovered they had some gluten-free um, cinnamon rolls. They had some soups, they had some, I think they had some gluten-free macaroni and cheese. I can't remember all the things. It's been it's been eight years, but I still remember that rest, that bakery, and I remember how important it was to me and my daughter when we're sitting there in a different city and you know try, managing life in a hospital that didn't have actually particularly good gluten-free options. The only thing I could really eat in the hospital was a salad, and when you're hanging out in the hospital for two weeks, it gets really old only having a salad. Um, and luckily we're past the days where I remember my family when, we were, when my daughter was first eating gluten-free, we get to a restaurant and we asked, hey, do you have a gluten-free restaurant? This was in rural Oregon. And they were like, ma'am, we don't have any of those newfangled diets around here. No. And I was like, okay. And then we kind of laughed to ourselves. We're like, it's not really a newfangled diet. It's um, a food allergy. But again, not everyone is educated and about it and you just kind of go with it. But don't compromise your values and don't just eat gluten to be, oh, you know, or your food allergies. Don't just eat it just to, to not be make a scene. You know, be assertive. If someone invites you over, be honest. Tell them that you have a, a food sensitivity and go from there. Thank you guys so much. I could go on and on about this because, you know, I've been living with food allergies for um, over 10 years. And they adjusting my life to a life without food allergies, it has not proven to be um, problematic. It's proved to be improved. It's increased the quality of my life so significantly that the results are so worth it. I do not regret eating without my allergens. I regret when I do. Bye.